hey guys and welcome back to another week's worth of meals your girl april newly me if you are new but if you're one of my subbies hey youtube bestie and we are doing lasagna first up nothing really special about this lasagna except for these y'all of garlic that i got from kansas city when we went there on business my sweet friend gave this to us and it had bay leaves and crushed red peppers it just like it took my lasagna up to another level like i really appreciate her giving this to me because i'm literally almost gone with that whole jar of said garlic but anyway just went ahead and sliced up probably one third or maybe even one fourth of a yellow onion and then the only vegetables I had on hand were bell peppers, surprise, surprise. But I had yellow, um, I think yellow and orange, and I ended up only doing the orange. I like to, especially with pasta, I like to put in as many vegetables as I can get away with. You guys know I have a picky eater. But uh, when I saute things or bake things, anything pasta related, I love to put in or sneak in any kind of vegetables that I can. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But lasagna is one of those dishes, kind of like meatloaf and things like that, where if you know the basic recipe, you can remix it a thousand different ways, substitute things out a million times, and really make it your own. I've put squash in lasagna, I've put spinach in lasagna, I've used red, yellow, green, as you see orange bell peppers. Um, you can really make it your own as long as you know the basic recipe. I, every time I make lasagna, I think it's different. I don't think I've ever made lasagna uh, the, same, the same way. It's always a little different. Um, there's always things that are in season that aren't in season you know it may just boil down to what i also have on hand you just never know vegetables that i do put in my lasagna i do like to saute them in a little salt and pepper in the skillet for a little bit just to soften them a bit um because they are going to be in a sauce and under the pasta so i just want to make sure that they're cooked thoroughly beforehand and once my veggies soften up a bit, I'll go ahead and add the meat. Now in this recipe, I did use half ground beef and half sweet Italian sausage that I both got both of these from my butcher box. I loved the sausage and I loved the ground beef. You can really taste the difference. I've never had grass fed ground beef until now and you can really taste the difference. Um, as you can see, I like to season it up. Y'all know I am the season princess, y'all. Like I love season don't under season my food but yeah once everything softens up as far as the veggies go ahead and saute your meat with the vegetables and there was all the garlic I chopped up we are team garlic in this household I love garlic I used to be very very intimidated of whole things of garlic I don't know why I'm never going back to the jarred stuff but yeah um you want to go ahead and saute this up I don't like to put it in as soon as I put the meat in because I do not want my garlic to scorch or burn that is the grossest taste and it will ruin the entire meal so I always like to hit that more towards the end versus the beginning once everything I think is heated up pretty well I will go ahead and add in my sauce it has been a minute y'all since i made a homemade sauce maybe i'll do that for y'all uh next month but classico is my go-to brand this was the roasted garlic and tomatoes i believe really good this was my first time i think trying that one and i'm i'm certainly going to pick up another one here I am laying the noodles. I literally forgot y'all to put a ladle of sauce on the bottom. Thank God it did not stick. Normally it would stick, but I was using this tin, so that's why I think it didn't stick. But you wanna put a ladle of sauce on the bottom. And then I always start vertical, and then I will go ahead and put the next layer of noodles horizontal. That way it's like kind of, um, I don't know what to call it, like a checkered pattern. That way when you cut your lasagna, it stands up versus, you know, squashing everywhere. You could be one of the things I love. So I am not team ready noodles. Have you guys seen those package of noodles where you don't have to boil them 
you just put them in, you know, your lasagna or dish or whatever hard. You're supposed to put them in the oven. I do not like those. They never, they never come out soft for me. I don't know what it is. Um, I prefer a drier lasagna, so maybe that might be it where I don't use a lot of sauce. Like some people really use a lot of sauce. I don't. But yeah, last time I did that, like my lasagna came out like crackers, y'all. Like I was so irritated. But I'm not, mm -mm, I haven't had much left. So y'all use those. Comment in, you know, the comments below if you are team old fashioned boil the noodles. Are you guys like those ready, you know, to cook noodles where you don't have to boil them? You just go ahead and put them in the dish. We also don't eat ricotta cheese in this house. So yeah, that's definitely going to be left out. Not here for it. If you are, go ahead, girl, but we definitely are not. I was telling you guys before, whatever way I start on the bottom, I go the opposite way when I do my second layer, and then I'll go back to the original way once I do my third layer. I, layer sorry. I usually only do three layers, um, but I find when I do it this way, it makes my lasagna sit up when you cut into it. My mommy taught me this trip. It never fails. Try it. This way, your lasagna will stand up and be all you know cute we eat with our eyes um you know it'll sit up and just look cuter my plate y'all I just paired it with a big side salad it was great that's my favorite dressing of the moment and it was just a really hearty satisfying meal there goes Tony plate y'all know she only eats peas but you see how the lasagna sits up and doesn't fall apart but anyway that's lasagna you don't have to wake up chicken cacciatore I do not have a detailed video because this is reserved for my patreon members they got the recipe list and everything I just wanted to share with you guys this is what we had that week chicken cacciatore paired with white rice and then I sauteed no I actually put those in the oven that's squash and zucchini again these are for my paying patreon members um, if you'd like to join my patreon I'll leave the description I'll leave the link in the description below but I did want to share with you guys since this is what we had that week Disclaimer, this is not authentic Kahlua pork. I am not of Polynesian descent. I'm not from Hawaii, so this by no means is authentic. But I first tried this on our honeymoon when we went to Hawaii. It's usually made with banana leaves. You wrap up the pork and roast it that way. Unfortunately, I found some banana leaves on Amazon, but I wouldn't be able to get them in time. So yeah, I was just craving it, so I had to have it. Also, Kahlua pork does not call for onions. I just like onions. So again, this is not authentic at all. Um, this just is catered to our taste here in this household. But look up some Kahlua pork recipes, y'all. Like It is so bomb and it's such a lazy meal. Basically, I'm just sauteing the meat in my Dutch oven and I only seasoned it with salt, pepper, um, and liquid smoke. Again, this is usually wrapped with banana leaves that I couldn't get a hold of. But yeah, it's such an easy meal. I was not feeling good this day. So this was something that I could just kind of let go and kind of forget about and chill for the most part. You see me seasoning up that meat, child. Like I am not playing like every, every corner needs to be seasoned. Oh, I used some mustache. I forgot about that. But not a lot of seasoning in this because that liquid smoke um, really really does the job and as you can see the marbling on this pork a lot of fat and you guys know a lot of fat means a lot of flavor so you really don't have to do a lot with Kahlua pork it just makes an awesome fulfilling meal we can spend all day in bed. If you didn't want to do it in a Dutch oven or in the oven, you can always use a slow cooker. But I like my, mirror, my meat to be seared. And a lot of people that cook with slow cookers don't sear their meat. And I just think that's an element that shouldn't be forgotten. It really does add something to the dish. 
These are our sides, some green beans, and of course peas for the bay. But there's my meat once it's browned, and then I just let it roast in the oven. And you know, it takes about two hours, and there's the plate. It was pulled, like, I'm telling you, the, the pork just fell apart. It was so good. Um, that pork only lasted us, I wanna say, for three days. And I put mine on salad, girl, on a tortilla. It was just, it, it hits, it never miss. So y'all, I am always gonna be honest with you guys and keep it 100. And this is no exception to the game. This is cod, Alaskan cod that we got from Butcher Box. I did not like it at all. Tony said it was okay, but I just did not like it. The texture was very rubbery and it was very bland. I know most white fish uh, is bland, but this kind of put me in the mind of tilapia and I can't stand tilapia because it just it, there's no flavor to it. I love like snapper and uh, salmon because they actually have a flavor. This was just very bland and the texture was just not it. I didn't know if it was cod itself or the butcher box cod that I didn't like when we went to a restaurant, Tony ordered some cod and y'all just don't like cod. <laughs> I don't like cod. Um, and I will say also the salmon that we got from our from our most recent butcher box, I did not care for that salmon either. So I just won't be ordering any kind of seafood from my butcher box because I don't like the texture or taste from the two that we got. And it's kind of a waste of money because the only person eating these fish uh, is Tony, and she doesn't eat salmon, so I had to give away the salmon to a friend, but it was just a waste of money. So I'll just be sticking to, you know, the beef, pork, and chicken when it comes to the butcher box. So anyway, y'all, as you can see, I seasoned up both sides. It's very important to season both sides of your protein. And I just put it in the oven. You saw me make a lemon butter marinade our rub, whatever you wanna call it. So I went ahead and drizzled that over the fish with the seasoning and just popped those in the oven. Doesn't take long to cook fish. We normally eat fish in this house probably once a week for the most part, at least three times a week. So very easy meal, very go-to for us, you know, really on brand. Uh, we are both seafood heads. So usually, not in this case, any kind of seafood um, that you give us will love. So I had some asparagus. Um, this looked really fresh and good at the store. I love asparagus. Asparagus, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli are my favorite vegetables. I can eat those every day and not, you know, feel one way about it. But I am team cut all of the stems off because the stems usually don't hold any flavor or nutrition value. And this was the meal. See, my mine grows heavy on the rice. I love me some daggone rice. And I'll show you Tony's plate. Boom, there she go with her little peas. But it was a go-to meal. It wasn't horrible, but I definitely, again, will not be ordering any kind of fish from ButcherBox. Box.